Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous and I mean over the top beautiful day here in the end times. We have 75 degrees here on Tuesday, August 3rd, 2021 and uh, my day just my day just got better uh you know i signed up to get a uh, social security starting in uh in a couple of months you know when i turn 62 i will be getting my 752 dollars a month uh that's what i will be living off of starting in october but uh i have some good news from Social Security, they're, they're talking about that I was in a former job that I got, um, <laughs> that I got $577 sitting in a retirement account from a former job. $577, completely unaware of, just fell into my lap. I mean, of course, I have to get it. And who it is from, uh, I honestly don't know if I've ever told this crazy story, but I'm just going to sit here and tell this crazy story on this beautiful day uh, while I drive to Home Depot. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, I, I did get my $83 back from Home Depot after fighting for a month. So I have an $83 card to go spend at Home Depot. So anyway, back to this story of this $577. This is back when I was the news editor of a, uh, <clears throat> the news editor of the weekly uh, entertainment rag in Santa Cruz, California called Good Times. Good Times, and I, I was the news editor of Good Times for two years and never did care for my boss Billy Bob. Billy Bob and I never cared for each other. Uh, we just tolerated each other somehow for two years although we couldn't stand each other. Uh, but he kept me on because I did a good job for cheap and uh, he was a cheapskate. And uh, so anyway, and I would work for nothing. Uh, so it finally happened. Uh, I'm trying to remember the order of things that I was going, my dear sweet ex-wife and I were going to work in New Zealand. We were, I was gonna go work on a biodynamic farm in New Zealand and she was gonna teach school so we had both already quit our jobs. So uh, we applied for this job. The, the, the folks out of New Zealand said that we were a shoe in. So she and I both turned in our resignation effective in 30 days. Uh, that we were gonna work 30 more days and then pack up and move to New Zealand. Well, it so happened that uh, what, what happened with that is my wife got her green card because she had a master's degree in special education, which they really wanted in New Zealand. We were gonna spend a year down there. So she got a one year green card to work teaching school in New Zealand, but they took a look at my resume uh, you know, basically to, I guess, go make compost at a permaculture farm and decided there is no reason that they couldn't find somebody else in New Zealand. So anyway, she got her card and I did not get mine. But uh, in the, the, while we were waiting for that decision to be rendered, we quit our jobs, both of us. I mean, you know, effective in 30 days, and during that 30-day period, when I, I was down, it was within the last 10 days of, of working on this job, I did, uh, had this little thing called flotsam and jetsam. What flotsam and jetsam was, 
uh, was just these little humorous, little, you know, little tidbits of whatever I picked up on the street here and there out of the last week. And uh, if you remember that uh, that awful little uh, pit bull named Spuds McKenzie, that is that little that fucking little pit bull, Spuds McKenzie, the the mascot for Anheuser Busch back in the 1980s. This was in 1987 when all of this happened. So uh, <clears throat> so Neil Young came down touring that uh, blues album of his, Neil and the Blue Notes, that just totally tanked that uh, album that got no critical acclaim. But he was down, you know, Neil would always, he lived right up the street from Santa Cruz, so he would come work out his material in, uh, in Santa Cruz to see how the songs played. So he, he did this song that at his show in Santa Cruz, uh, basically talking about that he was never going to sell out. Uh, I can't remember the, the, the name of the song or the exact uh, lyric, but he mentioned spuds, meaning that he wasn't going to sell out to spuds. Uh, meaning Spuds McKenzie, that he wasn't going, that he wasn't going to compromise his, uh, his, you know, his artistry to uh, get a big check from uh, from Budweiser. Well, it so happened that our number one advertiser at Good Times, uh, it was an eighteen thousand dollar per year account. Uh, $18,000 a year that Good Times made. It was the single biggest account. It was the back cover. Uh, the biggest account in the newspaper, the entire back cover was the, you know, the local Budweiser uh, distributor in Santa Cruz, obviously, with an entertainment rag called Good Times. So anyway, uh, in flotsam and jetsam, in flotsam and jetsam, I made some little remark about that. I, I did this little two-sentence thing about uh, about that Neil Young, uh, that Neil Young line, and I called Spuds McKenzie the most putrid little pit bull in America, the, the most putrid little pit bull in America, you know, that awful, irritating little dog. So anyway, keep, keep in mind, I had already put in my resignation to my boss, uh, to Billy Bob, uh, and I, my 30-day resignation, and I had about 10 days left on that, that I was, that I, that I was going to work. So... What happened when that flotsam and jetsam thing came out without my knowledge is that the Budweiser distributor canceled their ad in, uh, in, in outrage over me calling Spuds McKenzie the most putrid little pit bull in America. Uh, that pissed them off so much that they canceled their 18,000 two hundred dollar uh, per year ad and I was off covering a story I was up in San Francisco working on a on a story this was back before cell phones so uh, my boss or anyone else had no way of knowing so my co-workers thought that uh, that I knew that I was getting fired. So Billy Bob called up uh, this fat ass uh, clueless moron. Uh, we'll call him Refrigerator Perry, who ran the thing, and told him that they were going to shit can me, trying to save the ad. So Billy Bob says, "You know, I'm going to fire that guy. Blah 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 for uh, doing this." And so. 
Billy Bob already told the other people on the desk, you know, the other editors, that I was fired. So they thought the, that, that I, so everyone thought that Hambone had been fired and knew it. Well, I was up in San Francisco. So I, so I come back. Uh, it's about uh, it's about seven o'clock at night, and I don't go home first. You know where the phone call from my boss would have been, basically fire me. I just went back to the office because I was such a dedicated employee because I you know I hadn't been at my desk all day, so I I, I was working, you know, from like seven p.m. to midnight getting the story together. So I get there at uh, at seven o'clock and the uh, and the copy editor is there and he looks at me like what the fuck are you doing here Hambone and I said what are you talking about I said I work here and uh, and, 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 and he goes well I don't think you do and I said what are you talking about so I heard this whole story from the copy editor that Billy Bob had fired me and I no longer had a job and I laughed and I said, well, I, I, I guess I'm always the last to know. And so he tells me that I've been fired. And I, and I promptly go right back to work again. You know, writing up the story. I'm sitting there. And then it's about probably about 9 o'clock at night. Who comes walking in the office? It's fucking Billy Bob. My boss, you know, the the head of this whole fucking deal, this fucking asshole named Billy Bob, and uh, so he looks at me like he's just, uh, you know, like he's just seen a fucking ghost, and he goes, Sam, you know, what are you doing here? And, and I and I said, Billy Bob, I, I said, despite rumors to the contrary, uh, I think that I still uh, have a job here for uh, I, that I still have a, a, a job uh, here and that I work here for a few more days. So I'm sitting there with Billy Bob, me and him, the only two people in the building at 9 o'clock at night. And he goes, oh, well, uh, you know, good luck. And, and he just leaves the building and he leaves me all alone in the building. And I'm sitting there uh, writing and going, what in the fuck is going on? So I called the managing editor and said, what the hell is going on here? And, you know, she told me, she, uh, she laid it out everything and, and told me that I was fired, that a Billy Bob had fired me. I said, I just was here talking to Billy Bob five minutes ago. And she goes, well, obviously, uh, Sam, he's just using you to get one more story out of you uh, before you figure out that you're fired. I said, but you're sure I'm fired. She was sure I'm fired. I sat there, and I'm sitting there in the in Billy, you know, right outside Billy Bob's office door, uh, and I sat there and, and wrote out my "fuck you, Billy Bob" letter. I mean, I told that motherfucker, I ripped that motherfucker a new asshole up and down, telling him what I thought of him, his whole fucking paper, blah, 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 you know, and, and said, listen, fucker, I, at that point, now I remember I had four days left. That's right. I was 26 days and I still thought I was going to New Zealand. I hadn't heard from immigration in New Zealand yet. I ripped this motherfucker a new asshole, and uh, I said, I'm not going to give you the pleasure of firing me. I said, for the second fucking time this month, I quit this fucking thing. So I, I wrote out a, a, a clear uh, resignation letter that, that I was quitting, that I was, uh, for the second time, I was quitting that fucking place. He could go fuck himself and, and, and all of this. So uh, I just left it on his desk and, uh, and fucking went home and, and needless to say, never came back. And uh, it was months later, uh, months fucking later, uh, that I somehow was talking to this lawyer friend of mine and uh, telling him, you know, just laughing about this whole story. 
and he said that it sounded to him like I'm uh, no wait a no wait a minute no it wasn't the lawyer it was somebody who worked in unemployment that's right someone who worked at the unemployment thing somehow I got into a conversation about this whole thing with just as some person that worked there that I met somewhere at a party or something and I was just telling this whole fucking a uh, funny story and, and she was listening to it and she said well it sounds to me like you have a case against Billy Bob and I said what the fuck are you talking about she goes well were you or were you not available to work when he fired you and I said well I was available to work for four more days uh, I, I yes, I was available to work for four more days, but I heard I was being shit canned, and, and, and so you know I told him, and, and, and I said, uh, she goes, but you were available to work, and I said, well, technically yes, uh, I, I said, but there's only a couple of problems. She goes, what's that? And, and I said, well, darling, uh, he never fired me. I I, I said I quit. I said not only did I quit once, but I quit twice. Uh, I have tendered two letters of resignation uh, at good times, and, uh, and in the last one, you know, telling him to go fuck himself and the horse he drove in on and uh, all of this. Oh yeah, I remember where I printed this letter of, re of, of resignation when Billy Bob first got to Santa Cruz years before you know when he was broke uh, he made this porno movie with this uh, and, and on the front of the the front picture of this porno movie was Billy Bob fucking these two women uh, at the same time with this big shit eating grin on his face so I blew that picture up of that porno a film of him you know basically letting him know that I had this porno film and I blew it up to an 11 by 16 on the office uh, printer and wrote my uh, resignation letter on the back of this photograph from an old porno video that Billy Bob had starred in. So anyway, uh, I told her that I had not quit once but twice. So she goes, well, you might want to talk to a fucking lawyer. So. I had a good buddy who was a lawyer, so I called him up and, and said, Brother, uh, I said, let me tell you what's going on. And, and he had known about the story, and I told him about the conversation that I had had with this woman who worked at unemployment. And he goes, Ham hey, there's only uh, one problem. And I said, what's that? And he goes, you were not fired that you quit not once but twice that you have no grounds for uh, for a claim and I said so you're not interested in taking this case and he said you have no fucking chance winning this case it, it, it's a slam dunk and so uh, what he told me I had to do he, you know he told me I had to write this thing called a writ of mandamus that I had to write a writ of mandamus and how to file it and everything so I go down to the law library and I find out how to write a writ of mandamus and I wrote this whole fucking thing and all of this legalese you know explaining about me calling Spuds McKenzie the most putrid pit bull in America and all of this I told I, I told the whole fucking story that I just said here in this writ of mandamus <laughs> I file it uh, I file it with the uh, with the court and uh, and so uh, I filed that and while it was coming I actually picked up the phone and called Billy Bob and recorded him without him knowing that uh, that I uh, that I was recording him 
to get him to say in that recording that he fired me, which of course he was making it sound like that he fired me. Uh, so that, no, wait a minute, I'm, I'm sorry, I mean, I, obviously I, I have that backwards. I, I called to him and, uh, well, how did, I can't remember the conversation, but anyway, I made a, a copy of that conversation for whatever he said, it was in my defense. Now I can't remember, did he say that he fired me or that I quit? I guess he said he fired me, but anyway, I sent this thing to the judge who, uh, who is going to be listening to my case, this, this unauthorized wiretap I sent to the judge uh, in, in this case. So it finally came and, uh, to the, where we were supposed to meet. It, it was actually called an arbitration meeting. And the, the judge made it 100% clear that neither I nor Billy Bob were allowed to bring legal counsel into the room. We ha we were, I was going to tell my story, Jay was going to tell his story, and the judge was going to decide. We were not allowed to have a lawyer in the room. So take, take a wild guess. Uh, take a wild fucking guess what happened. I get to the damn courthouse, uh, you know, I come in the room, uh, the, the judge is there, I walk in the room, and then five minutes later, here comes Billy Bob with his fucking lawyer in tow. And uh, the judge is fucking pissed. You know, I told you, sir, that you were not allowed to bring, uh, you know, to bring legal counsel in there. What are you doing? Uh, you and, and so the, the judge looked at me and said, do you want me to make this lawyer leave? And I, and I said, no. I said, it's fine with me if the lawyer sits right here. I said, I just want the, the record to reflect this is the kind of of person that we're dealing with, that this is the kind of person that Billy Bob is. He thinks he's above the law, he doesn't play by the rules, you know, and, and this is the crap that I have been dealing with for the kind of crap that I've been dealing with from this man for like two years. Well, the, good Lord, you should have seen the veins popping out uh, on, his, uh, on his neck. So anyway, we have the hearing. We have the hearing, and uh, all that the fucker had to do, all that that fucking son of a bitch had to do was come in there and say, I did not fire Sam Mitchell. Sam Mitchell quit. He did not quit just once. He quit twice and, and, and show the letters of recommendation. I mean, the, 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 the letter of shit canning me, it was hardly a letter of recommendation. The, you know, the, the two letters that I wrote, all the motherfucker. You know, you get all the way here and they say road closed ahead and they don't have any fucking detour. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, well, anyway, it'll give me time to finish the story. So, anyway, I, uh, well, I'm going to have to go this way, I guess. Uh, so, anyway, we have the hearing, uh, and all he had to do was say that I quit twice. But what he chose to do instead was tell, was his case, he said that he did fire me with just cause, that I deserved to be fired because I called Spuds McKenzie a putrid little pit bull. So he changed, he and his lawyer, his fucking lawyer, all, all, all that bitch had to do was say, brother, he quit, but he would rather, he, he wanted, you, you know, to be the big boss man that fired me. 
and uh, and so he he was gonna you know what I'm saying that's just the kind of guy he was so then the whole thing just turned on its head and he was going to make the case that I deserve to be fired uh, for just cause uh, for what was uh, impudence or whatever the official legal term is insubordination insubordination uh, was the I was fired for just cause for insubordination which I was very uh, proud of being uh, I would love to have been fired for insubordination uh, so anyway he had to prove uh, why I was being insubordinate by calling Spuds McKenzie the most putrid little pit bull in America and then I had to defend myself uh, you know so we had this uh, it, it was good lord how I kept from laughing through this whole thing you know I never expected to win this thing well take a take a wild guess uh, who won the thing did I win it or not well, of course I won it. Uh, I won the goddamn case, and Jay Shore, oops, uh -uh, Billy Bob, uh, had to uh, had to fork over four thousand six hundred dollars in uh, four thousand six hundred dollars in uh, in uh, you know unemployment benefits to me. And uh, so you can uh, match. So I, I, I and, and then the judge, and he, in his decision, he had all of these dog puns. Uh, like, though Billy Bob, though the uh, defendant did doggedly pursue, did doggedly his per pursue uh, his, uh, his, his argument. He was barking up the wrong tree. I mean, it was fucking hilarious. The, this smart-ass uh, legal opinion <laughs> from this judge giving me $4,600. And, and then a, a few days later, I get this package in the mail, and it's this tape that I uh, uh, that that the judge sent me and uh, you know say Mr. Mitchell this is our little secret uh, this illegal wiretap uh, which could get you in some serious deep shit uh, it is gonna be our little secret that I'm not gonna do anything with this so I got the forty six hundred dollars and uh, as exactly what happened the other time I won uh, my unemployment claim on an every bit as outrageous uh, claim. That's a whole nother story about the other time I got granted uh, unemployment that I did not deserve. Uh, so it went to appeal, of course. Uh, Billy Bob uh, appealed it and won the appeal. So this three judge thing uh, told him that he won the appeal and so the state of California paid him his $4,600 back. Okay, and then the state of California demanded that I pay them $4,600 back which is just what the state of Florida had done uh, a few years before on that claim that I made, that equally absurd claim I made to the state of Florida, and I just pled poverty. Uh, by that time, of course, and, you know, this was a year or more later, I was working at Century 21 Real Estate selling houses, uh, and I, I pled poverty. Uh, and uh, obviously never gave them uh, one penny and so unless unless uh, Billy Bob uh, appealed that uh, so I just left a message on Billy Bob's answer machine saying Billy Bob you, you know you got your fucking $4,600 back 
uh, and you, you, you got supposedly you got proven right you got your forty six hundred dollars back I've got the forty six hundred dollars you've got forty six hundred dollars let's just leave it's one of these fucking roundabout things here uh, I said as long as you are willing to let sleeping dogs lie we will consider this case closed and uh, that was that uh, in 1987 or 88 somewhere I, by that time it was th probably 1989 uh, by the time all that had happened and uh, there it is sat and uh, I have never looked back uh, at Billy Bob or good times or anything else and I went on being a real estate agent you know for the next 20 years and uh, tell today Tell today, five hundred and seventy-seven more dollars in my pocket. I just have to figure out how to claim it from them, and uh, so wish me luck on getting another five hundred and seventy-seven dollars. So I'm at a Habitat for Humanity, and I'm getting ready to go spend my five hundred and seventy-seven dollars. I suggest you get out there and spend your $577 while you still can. Bye, guys. All right, little dog. I got to go into Habitat for Humanity for a few minutes.